this was the issue everywhere Mandera, Wajia, Tana River, the whole of that space, Kajiado. Farmers were asking us, Hi. we are livestock uh, uh, keepers, were asking us, what are we going to do with our skin? Hi. Roslinda. Who, asked, who is this group of people standing between friend. us and the value that we can get from our skins and hides? You people. You are the people standing between us. And 75 billion of a product that we can sell. And we have a ready market, starting from our own children in school. Even the local market in Kenya alone, we are importing 12, 15 million pairs of shoes alone every year. Market is not the problem. Raw material is not the problem. The problem is the people to add value. They are sitting right here. True or not true? So, good people, as I said earlier, we must have a different conversation. We are having a conversation here about, or oh, you see, we have a problem with VAT refund. How does VAT refund stop us from adding value to the hives and skins that are going to waste? Muniambie. You know? So, and I'm not saying that there are no challenges. There are challenges. But there are bigger opportunities than challenges in our space in Kenya. Let us focus. Let us focus more in the opportunities that exist and less in the challenges that we have. We can overcome the challenges by leveraging on the huge opportunity that we have. We have a huge market in ESC, in Africa Continental Free Trade Area. We now have the market infrastructure for us to take over the market in our continent. The reason why our continent is importing milk, powder, food, is because Kenya has not taken its place. Kenya is supposed to be the country that would position Africa appropriately to be able to make sure that we supply every commodity, every product that we should. Instead, we are having a quarrel, small quarrel. Oh, Uganda is bringing uh, uh, cheaper, cheaper milk. Uganda should bring cheaper milk because they can produce it more, much more cheaply. We should be adding value to our own milk. We add value to our own milk, and I want to say here, we had a program of uh, improving on our milk uh, value chain. We had first 300 uh, milk coolers. That product was sabotaged, that uh, program was sabotaged because of interest, but I have gone back to that product. We are going to have another 660 milk coolers. We are going to add value to our milk. What we should be doing is our milk from our farmers. We should be adding value, producing butter, using it to produce uh, um, powder, and go and sell it in DRC, go and sell it in uh, Central Africa, go and sell it in West Africa. And then we get the cheaper milk from Uganda and we drink. Sindio? <laughs> yeah. Instead of having a quarrel with <laughs> having a quarrel with Uganda, why are we having a quarrel with Uganda? We are having a quarrel with Uganda because we have refused to take our rightful place in 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 in, in, in our continent. We should have made more steps. And, and allow Uganda to come and occupy the next place as we move ahead. Are we together good people? So we must have a different conversation. And I am happy that Moses is here. I have confidence in what Moses can do. I know he has a good brain. And working with you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This Moses Kuria, forget about the noise sometimes he makes. 
<laughs> I promise you, he has a good brain. So we're going to work together in this space. And I want to give you, you know very well that I'm not a lazy person. Yeah? So I will work with you and I will make sure that whatever opportunities that can be actualized, working together with you, we actualize those opportunities and move our manufacturing to 20% of our GDP in the next couple of years, eight years, if not less. <clears throat> Access to credit is a big component of our plan. Financing is going to be a big component of our plan. There are some that we can cover with the Hustler Fund, but of course we have the Kenya uh, uh, KDC. KDC is going to cover your space. That is the area where we need to raise capital for industrialization. Capital for manufacturing. Capital for value addition. So that we can work with the SMEs, make sure they have access to credit, but also build the capacity of our Kenya Development Corporation so that we can also have resources available for the people in your space. So, uh, good people, I am very happy this morning that we are having a progressive conversation. And I am very confident that going into the future, Kenya is going to move to the next level in our manufacturing and industrialization scale. I am looking forward, as we have all said, by 2030, we should be producing a million more jobs from manufacturing. We should take uh, our manufacturing from the current uh, one trillion of our, of our GDP to maybe three or four trillion of our GDP. We should be able to move our contribution in terms of, uh, of, of, of tax revenues and be able to work together. And I understand, and Mburu here will tell you, I have had a very intense conversation with him on matters tax. Yes. I've had a very intensive conversation with him. I have asked him very difficult questions because part of our revenue gets lost because the stamps that you use on your manufactured goods, we have more fake stamps than genuine stamps. How is that possible? You know, we, we have to sort that out because we are losing revenue. Part of why our contribution of uh, manufacturing to GDP in terms of revenue is low is because very many people pocket our money or the money meant for, meant for taxes. So we're going to reform that space. Mr. Mburu and his team have very clear instructions for me on where we should go. I believe that in the next two years, we should be able to move our revenues from two trillion to three trillion and to double it in the next five years. Many people may not like that story because it means we are all paying taxes. But I'm sorry, everybody we must all pay taxes. And I will lead the way by paying taxes. There will be no exemptions for people who are politically connected. There will be no exemptions for nobody. It's going to be the same yardstick for everybody. Are we, are we, are we, are we together? That's the direction we are going to go. And I want to promise you, good people, that we will also make our tax a regime predictable. I agree with you. I agree with you. Investments in manufacturing are long-term investments. You need a predictable tax regime so that you can know how your investments are going to look, uh, are going to look like. I agree with our good brother who said we need to reform our income tax, uh, uh, our, our income terms law so that again, we make it up to date. There are too many patches of it. Nobody knows how it looked like in the first place. So I, I agree with you that we need to do some work around that space. But as I work hard with, the, with our legislators to be able to improve that space, please make the opportunities that we have in this manufacturers, manufacturing space a reality for our country. It's good, for your, it's good for your businesses. 
is good for our agenda of job creation.